Well, hello again, YouTube. Finally, I have a Bobcat Toolcat 5600 complete with the regular Bobcat quick attach, the hydraulic couplers, its standard flow with the case drain, which will match up beautifully to this Halverson HWP 120 with an adjustable four way. So, we'll get this cut off the pallet, get the two married up, wire together uh, the harness for this. Stay tuned. All right, we got everything hooked up. The quick coupler is into the processor. We ran all of our plumbing up, loosened the fittings, kind of bounced the hoses a little bit, let them find their nice happy place so it's got an even sweep coming off of the machine. We have our electrical plug here. When I started wiring this, I'd, I've never done a tool cap before, so we started here where we wanted to end and then ran all the extra cord out and ended up coming in through the, the side door there. So we just chased the hydraulic lines in a nice S fashion right underneath the fender zip tied it just below the door and came in through the cab. Uh, all of the Halverson wood processors need 15 and a half gallons a minute, right around 2850 PSI as a minimum. The tool cat we have here today is a standard flow tool cat, so it's right about 18 and a half, 18.9 gallons per minute at 3000 PSI. So it should run this hydraulically fine. Uh, the lift capacity on the arm itself is about 15, 1600 pounds. Uh, so the processor weighs 950 that leaves us enough weight to pick up the firewood logs So we'll see how that reacts with the video and it's kind of weird because the front end it has a spring suspension So as you pick up the weight you kind of feel the front end drop a little bit the Bobcat does not do that So that's gonna take a little getting used to um, Trying to think what else It all should work just like a, a typical Bobcat uh, We'll take the camera move the angle over here. I'll show you how I wired it up and stay tuned all right, so as you can see in the front where the hose kind of comes up and around in that S, we zip tied the electrical piece right in there so it would follow the natural flow of the hydraulic lines. Came underneath the fender, came inside the door. All of the, the extra wire and the little module for the 120s is underneath the passenger seat. But unlike a Bobcat, I don't have two joysticks to hang on to. I've got the steering wheel, and I didn't want all the wires to get caught on the steering wheel, so we did go ahead and order one of the single-handed joystick controllers. It just hasn't come in the mail yet. I ordered it yesterday, Friday, today's, I ordered it Friday, <laughs> today's Sunday. I've had a busy week. Um, I'm not the most patient person, so I figured, well, I have a 120 harness in stock, so we went ahead and did the regular right-hand controller here on the joystick, and then we did the left-hand controller right here on the armrest. This works the grabber arm and the, the table back. And then the other one works the table forward, the saw, and the table back as a redundant. So here we have our 12 volt power connection inside the cab. We'll fire things up and get making some sawdust. Stay tuned. All right, well, we're all set and ready to go. I got my co-pilot in the passenger seat. He's been dying to get inside this machine and see how the processors work. He's too big to fit in the Bobcat with me, so it'll be kind of nice to have uh, my oldest son with me on this one. So we'll see how this goes. We'll get fired up. It's about uh, 86 degrees today, so we're going to jump inside the nice air-conditioned cab and make some firewood.
So not everything always goes according to plan, but true to this channel, I show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. That was pretty ugly, I'll admit, but I do have a workaround. Typically I come up with this problem where it's jamming because something's getting stuck between the bottom of the splitter wedge and the I-beam. It needs just a little bit of wiggle room. So my answer to that is a 5 8 hitch pin. The actual pin that is in this is a one inch, so if we put a five eighths in, it gives me three eighths of an inch worth of play. So the head will actually float just a little bit inside the I-beam, and usually that gives me enough freedom that the resistance of that coming through because of how it splits, there's actually an angle here coming up and an angle coming down, and if the wood gets forced in there just right, it'll create some down pressure between this bottom ear and the I-beam. So the hitch pins are usually like a grade eight, so they're pretty stout, but again, it just gives you that three eighths of an inch that when this goes in, that'll float just a little bit. So we'll swap this out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. On the back side, there's an R-clip pin, just like you would have on the hitch pin. Pick up just a little bit, and this comes right out. So if you can see, that'll give you just that much difference on this pin versus the big pin. Pick this back up to where you want to go, feed it in, take your other pin, lock in the hitch pin, and see, it gives you just that much wiggle room that it compensates for the down angle between here in here. So let's try to run this back through and we'll see what happens. Awesome. Did you see that head jump up? Normally that would have wedged and stopped, but because the head popped, the piece came right through it. So it is a good trick that is very valuable. 5 8 hitch pin in replacement of the 1 inch factory pin.
All right, here are my initial thoughts and kind of a product review. As you're watching the actual process videos, keep in mind the saw on this has about a 20, 22 inch actual cutting length on it. So when you see about that much of the saw coming out the other side of the wood, that just shows you that this is every bit of 16 inch, 14 inch, somewhere in there on some of the bigger cuts that went through. So just kind of keep an eyeball for what's sticking out of the other side of the piece of wood where you can see the tip of the bar. Um, again, this is an HWP 120, hooked up to a 2006 Bobcat Toolcat 5600. Um, visibility from inside the cab is actually pretty good, especially once you get it raised up to operating height. Uh, you can see everything out on the deck, uh, everything going through the four-way. Um, the only thing I noticed is when the arms are all the way down, the feet didn't quite go down enough that you could scratch the ground with like the tips of the, the arms there. So you're definitely going to want to have your wood up on the big poles, up on the runner so you can get underneath it. It just makes life easier to matter if you're on the Bobcat S300 or this, but uh, just dump angle didn't seem like it came down quite far enough. The curl back to get the log up into the cradle here on the table, that worked out just fine. Um, very happy with the 18 and a half gallons a minute at 3000 PSI. Uh, we did have a couple of hiccups, but they were pretty knotted stuff. I uh, showed you the trick about changing out the 5 8 hitch pin versus the 1 inch standard pin. Kind of gave us some wiggle room there. Um, it's not a perfect thing, so you do have to fuss with it a little bit. Uh, today seemed a little bit more than usual if you've watched the other videos going through. Uh, part of it's me. I'm getting used to not having the buttons here, but I was kind of running them like this because I had the one set up on the armrest. Um, but I'm happy with it. it. It worked out. I think we'll keep processing and do a couple other videos, do a couple other things with it. Uh, but as far as a multi-purpose vehicle, you can carry one ton in the back. You can pick up 15, 1,600 pounds here in the front. Uh, we did have one large piece on there that actually had the back tires off the ground. So it's got lots of lifting capacity. I think it's underrated for what it actually picks up. Uh, towing capacity, I think it'll pull 4,000 pounds, but as far as a wood processor, I think if this is what you had in your, your equipment list and this is what you want to process firewood with, I think it would definitely do it. Uh, I'm happy with it. We'll keep playing around here on the wood lot, but for now, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, check us out over on shaverequipment.com, check us out on Facebook, Facebook equip yeah, Facebook equipment Facebook.com slash shaver sales inc for over there on that and you can always email us at sales at shaver equipment.com thanks for watching